The potatoes are always good in Kuna, but this year's crop was less than fruitful. The Potato Kings went 0-12 in their inaugural season, leaving farmers and fans in agony over the offseason. Not to mention, starting quarterback Farmer Brown, a local Kuna high school legend, has packed up his bags and left. Tack on the pain of Boise State shutting us out in the Gem State grudge match. They took whatever fans we had remaining late last season, and there is no doubt that they own Idaho at this moment. Essentially starting at scratch, Old McDonald is looking for his first win and re-securing the trust of the farming community. To help him on his conquest, Old McDonald has put his own money into the program, refurbishing their training facilities so that the Kings can actually start playing like Kings. And then heck, it never hurts to bring in a three-star gem quarterback. Mitch Birmingham from Nebraska knows a thing or two about the farm life. He should be able to contribute right away for Kuna. In fact, as a true freshman, Old McDonald's putting a lot of faith in him and setting him as a captain. You met most of the team in the last episode, but you did not get a proper introduction to our big recruits we brought in, and this is our first ever four-star in CUNA history. Day one starter as a true freshman, bringing in winning time with him. He gets increased composure, essentially locking in in the big games. Dalton Lindsay is a star, definitely competing for play time from the right end position. Go ahead and put Ezekiel's name on the list too. This batch of potatoes up to a 78 overall, 77 offense, 79 defense. Looks like our grudge match is going to be another tough one as the first team poll is littered by Boise State Broncos. No potatoes in the first team or second team poll, so that's a bummer. Can't say we deserve any preseason nods after going 0-12. Maybe we'll get right against FIU in week one at Royal Harvest Stadium before going on the road for it looks like four straight. And then a middle of the season non-conference game against Ball State should be a good test before finishing off the year with some key rivalry matchups and a test with Duke. Old McDonald hit up the prospect list and noticed a bunch of one and two star prospects interested in the program. But that's not exactly the type of caliber we're looking for on the Potato Kings. So we took what we can get with a good mix of three and two star prospects and then added a couple five star and four star players for flavor. If we can hit big with one or two of these guys, that would go a long way. First look at the point distribution. We don't have many points to work with, so it was important to find guys like Saul Jizzy who will jizz all over the opponents with a four-star gem rating, 94 speed, gold arm bar, yes please. First game of year two, we're inviting a Florida school, the Panthers, all the way to Idaho. And on paper, we stack up pretty close. Now that's on paper. I don't know if I'm exactly believing what I see. This team is 0-12, but a new era, a new page is turned. As here's the kickoff, return by Buford Jr., getting stuffed. But that's not what we came here for. We came here for Mitch Birmingham, the freshman. First look at number five, stepping up to the field. Harvester is right behind him. Let's see how he does in this first ever pass attempt deflected. Gonna need to take a few check downs here and there to get a rhythm established. Rock cannot hold on. After a full off season of no football, I did not envision a three and out on our first play and first drive on offense. FIU in the red zone, handing it off to their RB, number zero, down within five to go. Another handoff back to number 14. He's got some speed to him right around the defender. First quarter coming to a close, 7-0, FIU on top, and they convert here as well and get so much more than just a conversion touchdown miss cues on defense mitch i'm gonna need you in a big way on this drive let's go ahead and dump it to harvester what it could take a second to get some camaraderie with the new team as he lobs up a big ball to rock the defender outruns him my goodness this has not gone the way it should be as we're down 20-0 just gonna look for some completions and positive momentum he finds harvester here mitch comes in equipped with a silver badge that allows them to perform just as well even in the rain which is clutch and we're gonna need a clutch conversion here on fourth down did not pan out on the last one now 27 0 six seconds before the half we'll lob one up to rock uh, I guess three points is better than nothing, and we'll take it to end the half. Ugly stuff today from the team. What in the world, man? 37 to three, miscues everywhere. I expect some growing pains from a freshman quarterback, but I think this is just an all around horrible team performance. Playing FIU like this is gonna indicate to me that we have a long season on our hands. We got a decent little quarterback here, but we got no one around him to step up and make plays or turn around and read balls. Ugly start to the season week one of year two 
blown out. Our back is hurting because how bad they blew us there. In the stat panel, I'm sorting by drops. Boston Rock with five of them things. Two for Harvester, one for Springer, and one for Bell. So I get Mitch had a rough debut, but if you minus the drops, it's a little bit better. Old McDonald in this group need a short-term memory because now we're 0-13 through one year in one game. Let's go on to the Gold Rush Classic and fight like we've never fought before in a crucial rivalry matchup. Wyoming home of the stadium at the highest elevation in all of the FBS. That should be no problem for CUNA as Idaho is pretty high up there as well. These guys have been training for games like this. Opening kickoff to the Cowboys. Let the Gold Rush Classic begin. I expect a frenzy of points. And it looks like Evan Sabota is still here in year two. He is a senior now, six foot five, 245. Man, has got some intangibles. I say it every time I see him, but he has a lot of tools just like Josh Allen. I'm not gonna be crazy and say he is or plays like Josh Allen. I'm just saying he has the physicals. Playing against CUNY Kings though, he might look like a Josh Allen if his defense can't get intact. Second and short, they're going with a steady pace of ground and pound football until Allegro rushes in. Beautiful way to blow it up there by the middle linebacker. Now third and six, QB forced to scramble. He came off the zone and it was free. Now past midfield, Wyoming trying to have a nice sustained opening drive play action here or trickery all the way around only got one yard out of it but it definitely fooled my eyes now it's a third and six running back out in motion here left a one-on-one -on -one ball to 23 touchdown Wyoming on top yikes that is not the defense I want to see just over here wondering when we're gonna bake some potatoes rather than getting mashed all the time need to see much better performance from number five today Mitch had a rough one. Let's shake it off. Need to know if this is his team for the future or if we're still going to have to go shopping as we dump it to Bale first play. There were some fireworks in this matchup last year at our home turf. I'm hoping for more fireworks in Wyoming. A lot of motion early in our offensive sets. That is something we're trying to give a new wrinkle for the defense to look at. Third down, they're making some noise out here in Wyoming. I find Bell slipping through the middle. Big game, Mitch. That's what I want to start calling you. So why don't you go ahead and lead this team forward for a victory? I am asking for a lot here without too many troops to reinforce the attack. We can scramble here and it looks like we'll be able to take it, spin, fight for the first. Bringing in the receiver, it's a fake jet. We'll have to send it up anyway because that pressure was hot. Leading to a second down. We got Bell securing it almost a first now they're gonna review this play i thought he had it and some all day nice drag another motion man is it confusing yet i don't know let's ask wyoming here in a second big third and seven scrambling out to our right do we have the tight end bell touchdown mitch that was money throwing that thing like a man on a mission there it is you never forget your first money mitch with the ball on the run yes sir big time to knock down your first collegiate touchdown and the extra point is doinked and missed so we're still losing by one evans got his cow pokes all the way down to first in goal looking for more i'm surprised that they're giving us a preseason rating of 79 overall on defense because i haven't seen it yet giving up 44 to fiu and about to give up some more here to wyoming we just got to do what we can to get in front of us. I'll classify a three-point hold as a win. Working our way to midfield. It's third down. Let's go ahead and slip it off to Harvester. Got to fight for 10 here. Swerve in for seven. That's not going to stop a hungry old McDonald and Mitch out here going for it on fourth down under pressure way to deliver needed three got four yards perfect football mitch was not to be deterred now we got a little drive on our hands play action that blitz is coming in extremely hot did all we could to get out of there as fast as we could they're showing another blitz but i bet they bluff it exactly that's what i was thinking now we need eight the big question is can we get eight gonna go to rock he put on a nice move and dropped it. This was a flat out drop. Not the right time for that at all. Costly turnover led to points before half, and now they have another chance for points here in the third quarter. Basically a touchdown. Hopes and dreams for a close one here. Shattered, essentially, as Mitch is going to stiff arm one, get dropped for seven. Tough times continue out here for Cuna. Just looking for 
anything. It's not even like Mitch is doing too bad this game. It's just that our defense is seriously a pile of potato garbage. Thankfully, Mitch found a man. Down by two scores, literally up against our own end zone here. We have to convert on a fourth and four. Quick shot to Rock, he's got it. With three minutes to work, we're gonna need to score twice. So let's go ahead and do this thing and we're not doing it there thankfully recovering the own fumble audible's not going through we're struggling here with wyoming's crowd getting loud and maybe we find rock but we won't so it's fourth down what are we gonna do i think meadow could spring free as we lob up a deep ball he's caught it do you believe in miracles because i did not see that one coming meadow what a catch what a play on the run here no inches away from just falling into meadows grasp unfortunately it gets swatted out of there and we'll have to just go back to methodically driving down the field but way to save our drive there meadow impressive stuff i need someone else to step up now and save our drive maybe it's brent aker and it is got mitch feeling himself out here he's hot uh but nothing i didn't like anything there flag on the play intentional grounding so it's second and 24 after the blunder we got an open man it's harvester taking off hitting to the right fumbling it and losing the game defense actually went down and got a stop but we literally lost the game because of harvester fumbling it like a buffoon out there man i can't believe it third and ten really at this point playing for pride because what is left in this game i had hope it was going to be different today i really did and it ended up getting even worse emphatic touchdown for wyoming chalk it up to a failed gold rush matchup wyoming is victorious 34 to 13. evan didn't have to do too much to get player of the game it's too hard to tell in the early season but i think recruiting's going just as well as last year which is not very got a few guys like jem terrell kane here that are interested in our school let's just hope it stays that way because there are long days ahead at the recruiting front like thomas tuska barely inching week by week towards his top eight and we're going up against a couple prestigious schools so as much as i'd love tuska to tutsi slide all his way to idaho i don't know man we'll have to see towards the end of the year i think hands down my favorite player in the class is sal jizzy who is a four-star gem running back i showed you a little bit about him earlier but man this is a quality prospect and harvester's a senior so we need to replace him soon on the road once more against the aggies we're gonna wear our all gold unis as mcdonald is hoping you look good you feel good you play good and we're gonna need to play much better against utah state so they don't run away the stadium here is not too jam-packed i think the aggies have won one game one and one we're zero and two i guess it's not prime time television for them which is perfect for us because the stadium polls not really getting to us look at all the open seats and look at where we're at on the field harvester first and goal desperately needing to cash in for points let's go to rock but the only thing rock hard on that last play was the defensive pressure swarming so scrambling out we got a man touchdown cropper crop dusting the db the road show is continuing and starting off hot really believing in this guy birmingham and he's gonna have a case week over week where he just gets better with experience to be successful in the mountain west and quite frankly to be successful anywhere in college football defense is a major component so let's hold at the goal line you know what they say offense sells tickets defense wins championships and ultimately we want to win championships because that will lead to more ticket sales and CUNY King's glory. It looks like we're in for a good one early here. I'm gonna call an RPO, read the defense, go with the slant, get right down to the one. Mitch calls for a play action and he's gonna take off, dumping it to the running back, Teague, touchdown. It's early in this one as there's still a lot of football to be played, but maybe, just maybe, a new leaf is turning here for CUNA, Idaho almost a touchdown first and goal mitch is on fire just gonna hand it off to harvester who finishes it off touchdown for the senior we give one right back on defense which i kind of expected with the two minute drill here looming they like to score fast definitely can right the wrong here just with some more points on offense harvester breaks a tackle and gets nine mitch for 200 passing yards and two touchdowns already just gets this one up smartly to harvester first down calling the tight end cross i see meadows on a one-on-one -on -one island and he burnt him i saw the mean stiffy and we hit him touchdown meadow from mitch yes sir this is Potato King Football 
going crazy. Cheerleaders, your first time celebrating in a year. Third and inches, sending Meadow in motion. Just gonna feed it to Harvester, who's got a hole, and picks up the first. Third and five, gonna hit the guy right up front. It's Cropper. Picks up another first. All the way down within the red zone. It's a fake jet touch and it's a power. So Mitch is gonna keep it himself. Bounce to the left, pick up a solid eight. Coach McDonald not opposed with getting Mitch involved on this offense as he has legs that can push it just as much. Let's run a little more smash mouth football. Another QB power up the middle. Mitch in there, touchdown. Q B one has arrived up by 19 coach mcdonald wants us to go for two of course to make it a three possession game the power worked offense has utah state in a very bad position because of the relentless game we've been playing this far i don't want to play too much prevent because it could lead to unnecessary scores like it did right on that last drive but we can go back on offense and get things right with even more points it is a scoring frenzy out in this one 35 points for the potato kings i don't think i've seen a more beautiful sight birmingham touchdown oh my gosh i am in love right now with this quarterback looks like we're on pace to finally snap the 14 game losing streak intercepted to seal this one allegro is gonna try to take it back and we'll get tackled down at the 40. This is the game where we snap the 14 game losing streak and the best part about it is the drought is over and droughts are horrible for farmers and their crops. Third and 10, if we can just ice it here, that would be nice. But who am I kidding? This game was essentially already iced as the second half started. Utah State Aggies, I'm sorry, but someone had to be the first, and you are the first victim on the CUNA Kings list as the sack delivers the dagger. Put your hands up for the CUNA Kings, old McDonald and squad, man. They are going berserk back home in CUNA, Idaho all the farmers around the nation unite as Mitch, the true freshman player of the game, hands down. Sweet, sweet victory means a level up for Coach McDonald. I swear it's been too long since we've been able to actually use some skill points on Coach. I wanna go ahead and get the influential tier on the recruiting bucket here for wide receivers, tight end, and then defensive line. It's all about influence when it comes to recruiting, but it's all about Adam Bale in the week two defensive performance. They got Adam Bale right when it comes to defense in player of the week, but McDaniel, four touchdown catches was good enough to beat out Mitch. It just feels so good because now this is the first time we see motion in the conference standings as well. QNUT one and one on the way up. There are teams in here like Colorado State and New Mexico already 0-2. Let's be real after that last performance. Why isn't Mitch in the Heisman watch? So far so good on the recruiting front. I just feel really handicapped with only 350 hours to work with. I seriously think it has to do with coordinator bonuses or just skill points. We need to continue to pump but maybe if you know in the comment section how we can get more I'd love to know after one win hold on now i think we got our swagger back okay okay it is a little too soon to quite say that but old mcdonald is feeling good fresno state it's a vacant stadium man they're sleeping on the bulldogs that's okay we'll go ahead and give a show for anyone that showed up cuny kings football jim sweeney field is the site for this one here is the kick off and buford jr ready to take it back Another game of CUNA Kings football starts right now with a beautiful return to the house. This team is red, smoking hot. Mitch's first time touching the ball, he already has a lead. So that is an ideal place to be as a quarterback in college football. It's time to continue to work and unlock this team to their full potential, lobbing it up first and goal. Springer hauled in the last one. Now let's let Cropper crop dust everyone on the way into the end zone. Touchdown. Right back down the field again. We are moving it and losing it with a sack. First time I'm calling this play, it's a reverse and Bell has some space. Just one man to beat and he gets a few out of it. Buddy got clocked and now he has an injury he's tending to with the wear and tear system. Gonna go deep to the end zone. Cropper, I thought he held on to the last second. The tie can turn at any moment, so let's ensure we get our three points so we can be up three possession. Did he really run into the kicker? Oh no, Fresno State. That's gonna be an automatic first down. I swear when it rains, it pours and that's exactly what's happening right now as we go across to Harvester looking to finish it off. Touchdown. What a 
difference a week makes and what a difference improved training facilities make. Seriously, shout out to old McDonald for putting his own coin into our facilities. And now we are inspired, we are confident, and we're winning games. What more could you ask for? In this case against Fresno State, we can ask for more points. So let's go ahead with the jet touch, minus one. Ooh, never a surefire play, so we'll just have to go back and get creative with it. Rock, I was really hoping the big man could secure it. So we'll just go with the drag to rock underneath for five. Already up 21-0, I'm not gonna say no to points. Two minute drill, time to work. I just wanna take a second to shout out the defense. Stifling job, holding him to zero points. Hard Harvester does break free and he gets a handful. Maybe it's time we spread him out, see if we can test someone or just take a sure strike to Bell. First and 10, it looks like Rock is chugging it. I see a big man on him, so I thought maybe I could test it. Yeah, no shot you're holding that. In fact, I'm surprised to see you back on the field there, 88. Wear and tear is gonna be going against you after taking a shot. Here we go on third down, gonna do it with a QB wrap, and we have a hole. He breaks free, he's got a couple blockers. Hits the spin, down for the first. Gonna have to be careful not to take too many shots with our quarterback because we don't want him busted up for the long haul. Cropper with the acrobatic play to get us down to this point. Second and goal. Mitch scrambling out left. He's got a man. It's Cropper again in the end zone all alone. Time to start hitting the exits. Fresno State fans, 31 zip at half. Let's go ahead and give Cropper the trifecta. Third touchdown of the day. I think so. Following the blocks. Fresno State finally starting to find some points, but I do truly believe it's a little too late. Looks like I was wrong and the defense went back to characteristic form, imploding, giving up a lot of points. This drive is extremely important if we can convert on the first down we will essentially ice this thing out now the stadium finally coming alive they're blaring mo bamba they want to get into it badly but i want to finish it badly and it looks like that's not going to happen a minute to go they've got it down into the red zone danger zone touchdown fresno state they're tying it up mikey keen decided to put the team on his back and drop some dimes now we have one minute in a tie ball game to go down this field and at least get to field goal range if not a touchdown. Talk about a defensive implosion. We cannot afford to let down CUNA fans in this one. We have worked so hard to maintain and get into this game. Would seriously hate for it to all go for waste as I look for Rock. Hold on, man. Boston Rock has been soaking up a lot of contact, so it has been difficult for him. Fourth and five, I'm actually kind of worried to run this. It might be better to go to OT. To mitigate risk a little bit, I ran it down to 10 seconds, so if I get it, maybe I'll still have a chance at a field goal, which I do not. That gives Fresno State a chance at a field goal, and we're gonna ice him. This could go down as a really bad play call by Old McDonald, so let's hope he just shanks it, and no, he split it right down the middle. We lost. I thought 52 yards for a kicker was gonna be too much but clearly Fresno State's guy proved me wrong. So that is heartbreaking. Oh shoot, I missed the fact that we have one second left. Is there a miracle still in play? Buford took one back earlier today. Can he do another one? Nah. Well, that sucks. Look at the points scored in the third and fourth quarter. Fresno State completed it. Unfortunate outcome, at least CJ Cropper had himself a day. Looks like we can go ahead and switch it up to the hard sell for Terrell Kane. We know enough about him. He values academic prestige, campus lifestyle, and proximity to home. With little to no competition, I'm about ready to say Terrell Kane will be Mitch's next best friend from the tight end spot. It doesn't hurt to give Mitch a little competition as Ernie Carnegie, a four-star quarterback, would be a good one to have. With Coach McDonald's crew headed to Hawaii, he was planning on giving him a a little bit of a breather out there on the island, but instead we chose to hit practice hard because we couldn't bear the fact that we choked that last game. Great weather, great conditions. We're in line for a good one at Hawaii. Kicking off to start the game. Here we go. Let's play some football. This team is led by Micah Alejado, a sophomore quarterback. Wish him luck today as he's playing freshman quarterback Mitch, who is a dual threat with some blockers ahead of him. Blown up on that last play, we actually got to be careful and manage our wear and tear just a little bit better. Now second and 10, I see a step here on the edge. Actually, the DB got back in good position. Good recovery from the crew over there. And now I see another pressed up situation here. I feel like sending the all goes and seeing what happens. As you can see, a quick breakaway in connection to Bell worked out. Play action. We got him, unless that's underthrown, which it 
is underthrown. So no, we don't got him. Third and inches need something quick and easy. That's exactly what we'll pick up there with Springer. Inches. Just past midfield. Let's go ahead and get a good connection here to Meadow going. Instead, he dropped it. And now we're forced to play some defense where Hawaii is looking to shed some tacklers and finish us off. Quickly down 17-0. This is not what we want to see on the road. So let's go ahead and get the party started with the dump to Harvester. These are games we very much should be and could be in the middle of and let's prove why we are more than capable. Past midfield, scanning, and I threw that into double, co double coverage, interception. After two really good performances on Heisman mode from Mitch, I guess I'm bound to have these garbage games every once in a while, and I'm really selling the bag. I would feel so much better if I can salvage it with a touchdown here before half. Instead, I'm having an all-time terrible day. Gonna go ahead and leave that behind in the first half because here in the second half, it is now or never for this team to strike. We can cash in three times, go for two, three times, and be right back in it tied up as Rock will go ahead and get us the first one. Just takes one thing to go right, and now we'll have a chain reaction. Only problem is for this chain reaction to work, we are running really, really low on time. Most important thing here is to execute in the red zone, so let's go ahead and do that. Harvester, touchdown. I knew we were dreaming when we went down this big, but at least Bell can scoop this one up and try to get us some garbage points. One minute and 30 seconds to go. They have so much cushion on us. We'll take a deep shot with Mitch. Don't say we won't try it. Not quite sure how to finagle the onside kick to make it work really well and Hawaii is gonna recover. Got the ball back with 30 seconds left. This time we still have a dream in mind. Beautiful lob to Meadow. Look at the comeback. But that is as close as we're gonna get because there's like 20 seconds left and no timeouts. So unless we get a non-site kick. Once again, not really sure what we're looking for. I'll just crank it to the left, hit the meter, do something in between. Maybe that'll work, but look at that easy recovery that's game started slinging it at the end almost had our own little rendition of fresno state's comeback against hawaii instead we're falling to one and four scheduled a visit for terrell kane and i'm not gonna lie i did place him on a bye week because i don't have 100 percent faith we'll get the dub even against a team like ball state because if we lose it's a lot of influence lost. Thought process here is we need to free up some recruiting hours because it's gonna get down to the wire with a lot of these guys and we have a good chance of losing them if we don't keep the pedal to the metal with visits and hard sells. Especially a couple of the three stars like David Costanzo and Kalen Reens. We have all our focus on the four stars and that one five star. With not many hours to go around, teams like Northwestern could get right back in it. Serious about riding the ship, it's UNLV week and they are coming to our home. Still yet to win a game here on the home turf that all changes right here right now 2-0 UNLV's off to a good start Mitch having a really good season already matching what Farmer Brown did all year long we're gonna go ahead and start it off with some trickery a reverse pass throwing it from the receiver's end it did not work quickly third down we don't want this to become three and out by any means so let's go ahead and lob one up in accurate ball despite our wishes the first drive went three and out this second drive is much better here we go picking up the first down with rock fourth down spreading everyone out we're bound to see something we like like this quick one to bell first and goal mitch this is becoming his forte in the red zone running the qb power and it works yet again don't have a ton of fans in the stands at one and four we're still hoping we can pull out something big and give him a reason to come to CUNA. Huge interception sets Mitch back up with the ball in his court, going with a slant undercut by the DB. We're giving it right back. Definitely will not be trying that again, and we'll go back to Vet Bell picking up a big first. Tight end post feels like a solid play. And yeah, Springer, it's gonna spring one up. Maybe we should just stick with the QB power. So that's exactly what we do on this one. We have the space to keep fighting forward. Essentially a different look here, but the same play, QB power, keeping it all the way, touchdown. Not at the red zone, I do wanna test and see if it's an effective call when you're still a bit away from the end zone. That type of play call would not work in the NFL, that's for sure, but in college, anything goes, and just like that, slot dime at midfield on the potato let's go ahead and lob up a bomb we hit him bell in stride touchdown what's the flag is this gonna be a roughing the passer call heck yeah way to stay in there mitch and throw one up look at the potato fans excited as ever coming out of halftime mitch is feeling himself he's gonna step up and scramble and hit the spin first down fumble 
the UNLV picks it up. Turnover did not come back to hurt us, thankfully. Harvester will be the one doing the hurting now, going for a first down. Trying another rendition of the QB power. This time, it's up the gut, and it opens again. Mitch is having a field day with those. More than likely going to be running those type of plays for a while, as they seem to be very effective. Springer getting us a good seven. Third and four. Looks look for Rock. He's open. Touchdown, Boston Rock. Boston Rock with that last touchdown. There's also rumors swirling down south in Salona Beach, California. There's this tight end named Stone Boston, and he's cooking people as well. We just got cooked on defense with that last play, and now we have a chance here on offense to go ahead and retake the lead. Running a read option, just handing it up the middle. Third and eight, all tied up, 28 apiece. Scrambling out to the right. There we go. He has him open. No, I thought we could float it over the top. He was so open behind that DB. Come on, man. That is unacceptable. Just like unacceptably letting him get open like that. Two-minute drill, first in goal. He's just going up the middle to the running back. They have the lead now. Had the lead and squandered it. Not the first time we've done that this season. And that's dangerous. Going to get into double coverage. Second and 20 with a minute 40 to go. I feel like I just have to call verticals and hope someone springs open like Bell. He held on. Another third down. We're going to take the slant. But before I could do that, sacked defensive pressure gets us to a fourth down this is not good trying to get it off we do springer thankfully our last ditch effort we were this close from being stopped yet again and what's this a broken play springer the hero in the fourth quarter comes alive defense huge takeaway now it's our turn to win this game let's go i want the ball in mitch's hands so that's exactly what we're gonna do keeping it got plenty of blocks cutting it and fumbling, oh no, I thought I slid down, but clearly not in time. Sold the opportunity to go ahead and kick the game-winning field goal, it's overtime. On third and nine, I need to see the best defense I've ever seen all year long. Let's get a stop. Moon, someone, no. Just like that, it gets busted, and now the quarterback back to pass, throws an interception to Mill. Here is your hero, Cuna Idaho, sending the home fans home happy once we get at least three points. Massive swing of events in overtime. Wait, now we're shaking hands like overtime wasn't happening? Hello? I'm gonna chalk that up as a random animation we got on the screen because now look at this, going for a big one. Harvester, first and one. One play away from sending everyone home happy. Here the home crowd goes crazy. Storm the field, Cuna. This is your first home victory in collegiate history. The fans are going wild. The players are storming and onto the field too. This is a good time to be a potato king. Mitch leads us to the second win in school history. Give him player of the game, of course. Two more coach abilities going right into the running game. And for the running back, we're trying to bring home Sal. We got him on a visit during a bye week just to be safe again. Really need to get a visit on George whenever we can. For now, the conquest continues in CUNA, Idaho against Ball State. Ball State one and two, I believe in year one of the dynasty, they are the worst rated team in all the college football. So uh, if we can't beat these guys, good luck beating anyone. Of course, it depends on how well their rebuild is going, but it's only year two. I don't expect Ball State to have five and four star guys up and down that roster. It's going to take time for them, just like it's going to take time for us. And Demarcus Perkins goes down with an injury at first play. Oh man, you just don't like to see that. Let's go ahead and turn it up with Harvester getting around the edge. Beautiful run. Third down, looking to convert early here. Harvester is left open, so we go ahead and dish it to him. Fresh set of downs, of course. Now we got a lot of options. I'm just going to take a deep bomb to a a DB that literally went right to him. Oh man, that's a blunder in the first drive. Cardinals want some points. It's third and goal. They go back to their tight end who gets some. Is this deja vu or another third and goal opportunity? Ball State wants more points and they get it again. Come on. Mitch is cold right now. We got to find a way to unlock him. Maybe a good little play to rock will help. Just a simple pitch and catch will do. Rock, where are you? Turning it dumping it harvester he's got it and he's got some space to work hurrying up to the line with 30 seconds to go in this half i think we have a step on the db the star number 24 got burnt he still got back he got mossed essentially terrific catch here with 10 seconds left before the half harvester wide open it wouldn't take long for this game to get a bit out of hand now would it we'll have to take another deep shot just like we did the last time touched down kings fourth and four down by 12 we just have to convert right here on the run we got cropper he's got the first it ain't over until it's over as you can tell mitch is starting to get hot one thing leads to another we got in the end zone rock touchdown what did i say game on the line we get the punt return and we run into the punter so that might have
might as well just become game at this point. Seriously now, do we have to get back to the practice field and run special team coverage? That essentially cost us the game, victory formation for the Cardinals, and they won. So uh, whoever that was, you better watch out. I'm finding your head at practice. 100 laps come Monday morning, you're running that track. Starting to lose some battles on our initial batch of spuds, so I went ahead and replenished the board with some three stars and a couple four stars here and there. Thankfully, didn't have to wait much longer until Terrell Kane decided to commit to CUNA. Three-star gem tight end should make immediate difference. Good news on the five-star front, we were losing on him to Syracuse, but I just uncovered his top rated motivation proximity to home so let's get him on a family visit usually i see the bar jump up at that i didn't see nothing and unfortunately that's probably going to spell the end for ernie carnegie here we can't even offer him a visit so let's just take him off our board see you just found the replacement for shadur sanders maryland's been hanging around long enough for bryce hawk so we didn't give him enough points until they got serious so we're throwing a 50 piece might as well also schedule nick laporta against duke it's going to be a tough game but if i can pull out the miraculous win we'll get so many bonus points points and practically insta commits for our team. I hope it's not too late to save Kalen Reens. He's also in the trenches with many teams pursuing him like Boston College about to go on a visit. Until our visits can recruit us at Duke Week, it is the Gem State grudge match this time headed to the blue turf. Boise State is ranked in the top 25. They're cruising to a six and one season, already bowl eligible, probably in line for the Mountain West Championship game as well. It is royalty being this good in the group of five. When you win so much, defend the home turf so much, win a lot of accolades in bowl games like this Boise City is behind their group of guys can't say as much for our town 25 minutes away CUNA fans are still a little skeptical about the team this is a great great platform to showcase what King's football is all about just down the road this is no problemo for our fans to travel and like i said an even better opportunity to convert some boise fans over to cuna good game here can go a long way to sway the fans and look at this slip screen get wide open dale harvester has ground andrew simpson's hurt on the play that's unfortunate pretty good linebacker for that group so hopefully he gets okay because look at the hole it leaves for cuna thankfully falling on top of our own fumble harvester needs to do a better job with ball security that's for sure but maybe if we can win Jizzy on the recruiting block, we'll have a new running back in town as soon as next year. A four-star gem that has experience running the rock is a huge asset for the team, just like Mitch to Bell, a huge asset. And a young tandem, freshman to sophomore at that. Third and eight, gonna head and send the blitz, sniffing out the slip screen. Somehow Genty still caught it and is off to the races. Not sure how we saw what was coming, but couldn't stop it. Third down here, defense holds. How about that? Potato King football gets the stop, marches down the field, and we're looking for more. Gonna go ahead and run the raid, run the read option, play action there to bail, cutting it upfield, first and goal. Mitch was initially here gonna keep it, but instead we're gonna audible out since there's like three linebackers in the vicinity. We'll go ahead and snap it, take our chances with a quick dump to rock. Inch by inch, we're getting closer gonna flick it out to the running back teague who is out of there touchdown rain game on the blue turf not a problem for mitch he has his ability in overdrive right now throwing an int to simpson right into his lap boise state could not get anything out of it which is a surprise to me so we need to make the most of this opportunity good opportunities only come and go so many times so let's go ahead and make the most of this one third down the bell was rung the horse was neighing i don't think that's gonna spook us actually it will <laughs> deflected at the line that thing went into the db's hands where no one else can make a play third and nine need to stop this offensive drive and he's going for a deep one how did he get so open he just missed the rain is holding back boise state surely so we need to make the most on this drive first down big conversion broke out of a little bit of a funk there now we have a man over the middle Yo, that tipped ball one inch away from house call. Instead, we run it back and get sacked. Audible into the all go is third and long. Let's just chuck one up, one on one ball. It's not gonna work. Knotted up, 14 a piece. The zig did work there for Bell. Let's see if he can take off and go the distance. We will happily take the red zone right now. Read option for Mitch gets decked. Gem State grudge match has lived up to the hype. There is a lot in this game from the shutout last year. The grudge is definitely strong after they spanked us at our home field. The missed. Anything can go in a rivalry game as we see here. 
this is a good conversion. Let's go ahead and run the option again. This time keeping it. He's got daylight and a lot of ground. Might have to get Kuna's baseball team to teach him how to slide because he's taking some hits where he shouldn't be. That is not good for his health. And now let's call the signature move QB power in the red zone. It works so well for him. Tucking and running behind the big guys is his forte. And that's exactly what Genty or Malachi need right here. Get behind some big guys, pick up the one yard, and they... Do not. Genty stop. Stopping Genty is a big deal, but it didn't matter as Boise State ended up scoring on their next possession. Now tied up. We need some points right here to go for the win. Instead, we'll throw the win into Simpson's hands. Pick six. Pre-read that route way too early. Unbelievable right now that we're still in this game letting Boise State have a chance. Made too many silly mistakes. Got these guys closer to the game than they really should be. And now on fourth and five, we're forced to go for it here. Mitch is a little cold but he can change it with a nice dime for the first can't get down on the potato kings they may be down but they're not out yet going for bell he holds on oh baby this connection is a fun one gonna have to do it all over again because boise state is hot their offense is finally scoring and truthfully that spells trouble for the potato kings hoping for someone to break free which he does right here let's catch in a run cropper feeling the crop dust oh my gosh that is four tackles broken all the way he's eaten all of them potatoes up when it comes down to it we're down by three with 15 seconds left no timeouts i need another like cj cropper type play field goal range or bust and we have to do it quickly bell can you be that guy oh my goodness can't believe he really caught that right now and time is going to expire two seconds one second nothing we can do about it except hope and hope no more that game is over 38 35 the gem state grudge match really did live up to the hype unfortunately we fall for the second year in a row as much as it stings there's no time to pout we have another rivalry game this time it's the harvest heritage showdown against umass they too beat us last year and it's our year for redemption we've lost wyoming lost boise state albeit they were close games but we can't go 0 for 3 another year in rivalry matchups they came to our home turf last year and beat us it's time to come to their home turf and beat them not off to a convincing start down 7-0 we'll go ahead and hit up harvester who puts on a nice move get some extra yards mitch looking for win number three as this empty stadium starts rocking the umass minutemen want to stop they're not going to get it how about boston rock for you calling some audibles to run our own custom mesh here that should do the trick to pick up it on fourth down now going to go back to taking a shot we have an open receiver it's cropper down the sideline brent Aker checks into the game and i'm going to call his name to the sideline he's got it touchdown brent comes in gets the job done and hats off to the defense for even giving us an opportunity to kick a 53 yard field goal we could get it and i forgot our kickers are notorious for having small legs despite having a small leg mitch has got a big arm so let's see if we can cash in and get this team right with a touchdown in the second half harvest heritage game up to par right now losing by three about to lose by a whole lot more down by 10 it's starting to rain on this defense come on guys umass up here putting some major points in the game that could have been lurked let's go ahead and look for a big turnover please instead we get injured and they're about to score first and goal we need to blow someone up and we're not going to it was once a promising rivalry game now it's just a blowout and we're looking for garbage points feels embarrassing to be down 24 to umass and that interception sealed our fate some people think umass is the worst team in all of college football but whatever reason when it comes rivalry time they play us tough so to me they don't feel like the worst team in college football in fact they're five and five in year two of dynasty thomas the defensive tackle should be visiting us this next week but i'm afraid it's too late syracuse really about to close down on it as we progress to the next week the moment of truth did we lose out we know we didn't lose out on sal jizzy we have the running back of the future now to compliment the quarterback yep we lost out so that is heartbreaking and lost out to kaylin reens last second bro all that time blood sweat and tears i knew it was too good to be true well it is duke week and although we lost the five star there are 
are a couple four stars visiting, so it's important nonetheless to take care of business. Optimistic to go into year three upon this foundation. Two wins, seven losses, really not good, but maybe we can walk out of here with three to four wins. I sure as heck know old McDonald wants at least four wins. I've seen a lot of glimpses from our QB Mitch, and I'm excited for what the future may hold. If we put down our head, go to work, anything can happen, and I've done this same play a couple times. Thankfully, we knock it out. What starts out is promising. I don't know why we always just throw it right to the DB. Blue Devils in hostile territory. It's Cuna, Idaho. I don't even know if anyone from this team even knows what Idaho is. Seriously, that's how far away North Carolina is from Idaho. A lot of people on the East Coast confuse where the city of Boise actually is on the map. Let's give them a beatdown of a lifetime so they never forget where Idaho is after we're through with them. They won't ever want to come back after we take care of business today. Well, that didn't go to plan. You get used to things not going to plan when you're on the Cuna Kings just like this turnover. With a lot of prospects visiting, I thought we would put up a heck of a lot better of an effort. Instead, I'm smelling a 27 to zero blowout on the turf. All we can do is just put our head down and try to keep working. Let's go ahead and empty up the backfield. Just call a verticals. It's less than 30 seconds and we're down major. So I just want anything to go our way. One-on-one -on -one ball, it's Cropper cropping right on over him. Only takes one big play for a spark and we're right into the red zone about to score again until rock fumbled it thankfully recovering here now first and goal let's go ahead and run the read option or sorry that's an rpo and it worked to perfection we run so many read options and rpos that it's easy to mix and match the two and now third and ten let's just take the cross underneath meadow fourth and one definitely going for it here as we're on the comeback trail just need to not jinx anything and take the right play sucks to see our defense struggle so much now giving up another first down can only get excited for so long because look at this marching down the field time is expiring we do get out and we're gonna take it for a first and 10 at the red zone defensive blunders again man it prevents the comeback from being fully complete once again still don't really know what to call here or how to play this onside kick so maybe i go curl it back in with some juice see if anything amounts it doesn't <sighs> Wow, another one possession game we lose. I think we've gone through quite a few of these in the season so far. Looks like I managed to still get a consolation prize out of Nick Laporta. For guys like Bryce Hawk, I'll keep sending the house because if I change it to hard sell and they have two interests for D level at, I don't think that'd go very well. Trying to make a late run for James Vilma and Russ Epstein. A couple more four stars wouldn't hurt and now we should also turn our attention to some three stars. Start off with contacting friends and family, see who bites. Falling off a cliff lately, this is how the season has gone 44 3 blowout to FIU, lost the Gold Rush Classic, got our first ever victory against Utah State. That was huge. Dropped a couple more close ones before running away from the running Rebels on our home turf. All State somehow squeaks past, Boise State squeaked past, and Duke squeaks past. I think I actually just counted five games that were one possession. Just two games left in our season. Nevada Wolfpack keep winning. Perfect 5 0 in the conference. Boise State right behind them. Here we are at the bottom, of course. Hawaii and San Diego State know exactly how it feels. I should also include Colorado State. They have two wins on the season, so one of our teams here is gonna get their third. And I don't know about you, I don't take losing very well. Old McDonald has been patient, but he can only be patient for so long. He's over there begging for results right now. He's talking to Dale Harvester saying, you're seeing your son, this is your last chance. Do you wanna go down as a winner or a loser? What kind of guy are you? And unfortunately for Harvester, I think he's only averaging like three yards per carry at the moment. So we're looking for a monster game to help him out. He's definitely versatile and can be used out of the backfield just like he here. Was gonna say I appreciate that about him, but honestly, he just sold us. Now third and 11, we're in a tricky situation, but the streak just runs right past the DB cropper. Eat my crop dust, touch down. I love that, absolutely love that from Cropper. And we got a lot of life left in Cropper. He's only a sophomore. I can get used to seeing Mitch throwing deep balls to Cropper, but I can get tired of Mitch not getting enough protection on this team. We need to protect our quarterback O-line. Calling in Brent Aker, the specialist, because of this exact reason. He's got speed to burn the opposition. Look out, guys. Mitch is hot. And this two-win Colorado State team doesn't know what's going to hit him. Mitch came out from the locker room and said, Coach, I'm feeling dangerous today. 
just trust me, big man, as he goes to Cropper deep incomplete. I know we're in a close one and the ball is on our side of the field, so it is really risky going for it on fourth down and we don't convert, but I thought I had some confidence in trusting our guys on that play. Going for it on fourth down, we have to really trust our guys now and just let the soft route underneath hit. Star underneath Fowler Nichols' name. He wants it all right here and gets it. 49 seconds to go ahead and get some points. I think we can manage. What do you say? Up by one. There's Harvester. We knew he could catch and run like the versatile running back he is. Clock is ticking. He's open again. Harvester out the backfield looking to get into the end zone. He is taking coach's words to heart. That is a hard working running back. Now let's reward him in his effort for some points. We'll go ahead and take our three and and get the four-point lead. It's a close one right now. Colorado State's really trying to mash our potatoes, but I want to bake it all over them. Down by two, we're losing to the Rams. I need to look for Harvester here in the end zone. Coach sprinkled some inspirational words so he can go out and play like a madman. Touch down number 12 there he is of all teams mashing my potatoes this season i can't let colorado state be one of them interception by mills that's right we're gonna bake all over you here comes the baker himself mitch birmingham jumping it over to harvester just establishing some tempo on that play and getting it away i see who's in there it's brent aker who's had extreme success every time he steps into the field we'll go ahead and take bell on this one though how about bell bailing us out and now we got a read option mitch can you get around this linebacker he's hungry for you third and five play action and the action here is a defensive sack we're really gonna go for it we're not in field goal range okay well they're pressing up on the receiver so that's always a good sign for us we'll just lob one up under immense pressure he's got position but the db broke it up third and 15 this is a lot of yards to work and we'll make him throw it away. Going for it here, sending the running back out to the right. We have a cover four quarters. I hope that's good enough. No. This is a load of barnacles. Third and six. That is a load of potatoes. Fourth and 17. This is the game on the line. Covering every zone we could. Harper was there to seal it with the dagger interception. Big play, Mr. 33. One first down, and we can go ahead and take a knee. Victory formation. Just got to get it. The press is crazy right now. They're all selling out for a run. So I'm going to surprise them here with a little pass of our own. And we got him. Bell dropped it i really thought we had that one so we'll try it again because like i said they're expecting run they were not expecting a crop dusting and there it is we got the win our third ever in school history some happy players some happy fans 24 to 19 down go the rams it's been a little while since we've cleared off the board some guys from temple umass boston college all gotta go umass went hard for these two stars that we were not putting attention to a lot of the battles have had some unfortunate ends but at least we got three solid guys ready to snag more of them as we go to the off season and look for transfers at home in the finale against air force if we can get one more win that will make for a four and eight season if we lose it's three and nine regardless kind of a disappointing season but low-key i'm happy because it's year two and progress has been made from zero and 12 we could only go up from here and if i were a betting man i'd say it would go up from here as well as we fumble the first play of the game to air force shocking the crowd that came out to support us that puts air force into the red zone running their classic triple option it can definitely get our hands full as they have so many lanes and options just like that number 11 touchdown quickly down 14 to zero we have a wide open bell just busted coverage Falcons get toasted. Having no problem whatsoever getting to our red zone, they're just making play after play. And Mitch is forced to get uber aggressive out here as they have a massive lead on us. Air Force defense is suspect at best sometimes, so we should have a fair share of good opportunity in what a deflection pick. I'll just keep my lips sealed and not talk about their secondary anymore after they did that to us. Under a minute to go, it's time to play some good textbook football underthrown a little bit rock still hauls it in the mad dash in the final minute is always a chaotic time for teams as they all want some points i'd like to send the community home on a positive note if i can because with winter time slowly approaching it's a lot of work to maintain the farm and they'd be a whole lot happier if their cunic kings could win a game went ahead and took the last time out first and goal four seconds if we can't get a quick strike here then i'm gonna go for three but no need touchdown right before half that's textbook look at all the crowd going 
going crazy. Got rewarded before half, got rewarded after half right here until I just sold a golden opportunity to tie up this game. Here comes the Air Force secondary down the field. Can we tackle him? Mitch dove and tried. Harvester 21, everyone trying to get him. Not the way to do it out here. Fumble, strip sack. Air Force recovers. Their takeaways are hitting hard right now. Turnovers lead to points. They're doing a great job converting all the opportunities they get. Their style of football wears you down. So let's just take a one-on-one -on -one ball and hold it in. Okay, now down by two touchdowns. It's a race to the finish line. Let's try it again. Why don't we... I thought it would work. Definitely silly for thinking the same thing could work twice because that did not work one bit. This will work. Streaking across the field. It's Bell all the way. Touchdown. Huge play within one score now. And the defense stepped up, giving us a fourth down. Punt return from Buford Jr. Let's get some good position and go win us a ball game. Who wants to step up and be a hero in this one? Maybe it's Cropper. Maybe it's Mitch. Maybe it'll be Meadow, Bell, Rock. We'll find out. So far, it could be Rock. We tried looking Rock's way. Now it's back to Bell's way. He had it the first time and almost had it again. Horrible time for the drive to be stalling out. Fourth and 21. Let's just throw one up. Who is there? It's Harvester and he's got it. Our running back just burned the DB like a boss and he's gonna do it again burning the secondary for another first work so hard to get this far it's fourth down gonna go across to the tight end rock he dropped it and our season ends on a drop from Boston Rock the senior is gonna graduate with that being his final moment oh man the pain at the last minute Maryland beat us out for Bryce Hawk coaching a new school like CUNA is not for the faint of heart you lose more than you win especially early in the rebuild this is long overdue but it's time to cut ties and jump ship goodbye Matt Bailey fired goodbye Joe Menard old McDonald with all his money as one subscriber put it in our first episode is coach primetime out here so we need to get him him prime time level assistance. Early national signing day, we are struggling in the Mountain West. Two four stars, one three star, that's all we got. Apparently that's bad enough for worst in the nation. I do believe we should be able to leapfrog most of these schools right in front of us as they only have one and two stars. So just let old McDonald cook here in the transfer portal. ULM has the audacity to offer us an offensive coordinator position like we're ever gonna take this downgrade. I just found this offensive coordinator from NIU and apparently no no one's interested in him. He is level 20, but has F prestige. So I wonder if that's it. Before I commit on him, because he has the elite recruiter bonus, I want to look at the other coordinators. BJ Casey looks good, but not our cup of tea. And sorry, JJ, you as well. Devonte Doss here, on the other hand, looks pretty solid to me. ECU and NIU are interested in replacing the guy they just fired with Devonte Doss. The reason I am going to go with Devonte Doss is elite recruiter for one. That's going to double with old McDonald. But two, he has a pipeline from Nebraska and you know we're big mid is from Nebraska. From one farmland to another, we need this guy to bring talent to Idaho. We can work on that F prestige. Now for defense, there are a few options as well. I'm gonna start by looking for any recruiters. And here we go, Alani Chen is one. So is Glenn Fowler and talk about in a big way. I think Glenn Fowler is my guy if he wants the job. If we land this group of guys, I think we'll automatically have a better year next year. We got Austin Young on offense, but we did not get defense. Alani Chen was the next one on my list. Let's go ahead and offer Chen. Fingers crossed he's got a couple head coach offers for UAB and FAU. So low key defensive coordinator for CUNA is kind of a downgrade. And what do you know? It looks like he wanted a taste of the golden potato after all. That's gotta be the old McDonald effect. A look at the college football playoffs. Nevada from the Mountain West represented lost to my Kansas State Wildcats. K-State lost by three to USC before USC fell to Georgia, the national champion. Gem State grudge match opponent, Ashton Genty, first team All-American. And Avery Johnson, second team All-American. First team Mountain West taking a look for any of our guys. No siree. Second team, there we go. Dale Harvester cracks the list. And go ahead and give it up for Adam Bale as well. All-Mountain West freshman, Mitch Birmingham is the QB of the future. Trey and Bell too, that was a one-two punch. Okay, Damian Green, right tackle. 
for finishing towards the bottom of the mountain west that is not bad i'll take it a cast of potato kings are officially baked their time is up in collegiate football cameron teague on the other hand just wants to leave us farewell have fun at your d2 d3 fcs school where you land i think it's the off season why we have so many extra recruiting hours i was really hopeful for a second our new coordinators came in and turned the tide immediately transfer portal is hot for our team look at all the players open to coming to cuna of course i add all of them to our board now i'm going to offer a scholarship to every transfer and if i sort by national rank i can see who means business the most scruggs kirk francis just a couple at the top i'm going to make sure to also put in 25 points to most of the transfers so we can at least get a good gauge if we're going to win the battle old mcdonald just managed to snag byard kirk francis a transfer quarterback who might give mitch a run beat out baylor for the transfer sophomore i'm open to the idea of competition if this guy's with it and on the final week of recruiting we get steven johnson james vilma a four-star receiver we needed that zion moultrie goddard okay brian nowark julius watford not horrible from the worst class in the mountain west to third best we got to work three four stars 11 three stars and one two star this class ranks 61st in the nation which is pretty solid middle of the pack and we got some intriguing dudes especially a few four stars that i like to see you've heard me talk about sal jizzy but i can't wait to see him tote the rock with harvester graduated he's literally going to be day one a couple of the freshmen we hauled in like nick laporta out of melissa texas this free safety is lining up at number one with a 74 overall and then of course sal with a gold arm bar physical ability and gold team player ability easy number one running back james vilma the late signee ready to be a villain on offense went ahead and threw brent Aker, touchdown specialist to tight end since we were a little light on that position did we just hit a mega glitch or what just happened Thirty thousand xp here in the offseason just jacked us up from level 8 to level 20 120 ability points yes yeah, something just happened and i know for a fact it's not because we got coach of the year heck i'm gonna go ahead and finish then this recruiting tree so basically what i'm seeing here is that next season the recruiting board should be stacked with 45 points to go let's go ahead and unlock tactician this is a good one to boost gameplay attributes for your team and i think i'm gonna go ahead and spread the love across the offense right now with the remaining points let's max out the quarterback passing game upgrade just now exploring austin young a little more i didn't realize he had elite recruiter already unlocked and he's got some big bonus points here for pipelines and additional interest every 10 hours absolutely love to see this man in his effect on our team and i use loss cuna king's game training results are in we're up to an 83 overall 82 offense 84 defense mitch took a big leap up to 82 i'm not gonna lie this is shocking to me i feel like we haven't done a whole lot we've had a couple okay recruiting classes nothing to write home about and all of a sudden we're up to an 83 overall first two years we're struggling in the 60 overall dump and now two years later up to 83 i think we'll continue to get better but i have zero concerns that this is going to be easy peasy for the next couple of seasons at least and then as we get better in the mountain west remember there's the power four there are a lot of goals that our eyes are set on looking at the roster though am i tripping i don't remember matthew martino a normal dev 75 overall quarterback he's a good backup this is the five-star talent sal with either elite development trait so watch out for this guy on saturdays he'll soon be playing on sundays with that two seasons of cuna king football has come and gone i hope you are soaking it up with the spuds i'll leave you with sweet sweet jizzy to think about when you come back for episode three and get to see him run rampant on saturdays keep soaking it up with your boy king sponge hit that subscribe button and drop a like while you're here it's much appreciated and as always i'll see you all in the next college football 25 video